Um, this, so this one works. that's all right. Uh, we're not the promise me. Yeah. Okay. That, that one works very well. That's all right. I just hope it. So um, we asked earlier, you know, who am I? Uh, and why am I here at Moderna representing the oppressed and may even be ineffective Central European Roma intelligentsia? Um, I am a Roma woman, the daughter of a Sinti circus performer who was the first to settle in his nomadic family and made a living as a boxer in the 1960s and a Romunglo, or with other words, Hungarian gypsy musician's daughter, whose life embittered, for she was prohibited to learn music as a girl in the traditional Roma family. I am a first generation intellectual, just like some of you here whom I have talked to, uh, an art historian, a curator of contemporary art, which means that my family has no idea what I really do for a living, and it also means that I'm obsessed with the power of visuality and the affirmation of the notion Roma art. But how could one speak about the complex and ambivalent notion of Roma art when there are so many basic concept, concepts unclarified or undefined regarding European Roma, naming, identity, relations to other cultures, strategies of survival, segregation, assimilation, integration? Question mark. When we try to respond to the question, who are the Roma, we get into contradiction and ambivalence already on the ontological level. We have to admit the word Roma is in fact an axiom. It acknowledges heterogeneity, attempting to describe the over 15 Roma subgroups living in Europe today with distinct cultural linguistic characteristics, and at the same time it is gaining legitimacy from the exact condition that it has the, cap the capacity to inform about the Roma, all Roma in general. I suggest to use the definition provided by the European Commission. Roma, quote, is an umbrella term that includes groups of people who share similar cultural characteristics and the history of segregation in European societies, such as the Gypsyism and Roma of Central and Eastern Europe, the German Sinti, the French Manouche, the English Gypsy travelers, the Finnish Kali, the Gitanos, and so on. The Roma intellectual and cultural movement has built this Roma imagined community, but also lost and wasted a lot of time and strength on trying madly to identify the priori essence of the Roma identity. The essentialist view on gender, sexuality, race, ethnicity, or other group characteristics is that they are fixed traits. So from this point uh, on, I will be handing out small identity models. Uh, this first one now is the essentialist model. Feel free to suggest modifications in the small structures and please pass them around. Um, Roma essentialism appeared only to come to the recognition building on the black, African, Afro-European and Jewish and so on analogies that our Roma diaspora is a process that involves practice and hard labor, which must be forced constantly, questioned and remade. Uh, Roma identity coincides with cultural theory Stuart Hall's understanding of cultural identity, which is a matter of becoming. Jan Hanko, the acknowledged linguist of Roma origin, also emphasized this analogy. A similarity of life conditions, oppression, discrimination may produce a similarity in the development of language and culture. The next model of multiculturalism is a simple fact of cultural diversity, which is often contrasted with the melting pot idea. The art historical analysis of the image of the Roma in Western art has proved that in the Central European panoptic regime of modernity, Roma became the pundits of Western Europe's African and Asian primitives. Examining the archaeology of these images, we can demonstrate how Central European societies created their own black through wild groups and individuals and through their own local or distant colonies. We may also see how the Roma body is sexualized and feminized similarly to the black body in European modernity. This uh, analysis argues that the colony as such is internal to the state, comprising subaltern classes 
and those human subjects perceived to be infrahuman. One could easily identify and highlight these internal colonies. On today's map of Europe, geographically tracing Roma to the Balkans and throughout Central and Eastern Europe. Angela Kotze, a PhD in social anthropology and herself of Roma origin, concluded that without applying the postcolonial theoretical framework to describe the situation of European Roma, what we conserve is the gypsy problem, the discourse that tends to construct the problems that Roma experience such as unemployment, poverty, and the other manifestations of social exclusion as essentialized byproducts of the gypsy's own culture, such as Roma are inherently socially inadaptable and intellectually deficient. Situating Roma in the domain of the postcolonial challenges this characterization by identifying the European institutional and individual racism and discrimination as being at the root of the problems Roma face. The first Roma pavilion at the 52nd Venice Contemporary Art Biennale applied the concept of multiculturalism and postcolonial theory to present Roma identity as a flexible, fluid, and open process, emphasizing its transnational and polarized characteristics. At the opening of the Call the Witness pavilion, uh, at the next Roma pavilion, Salman Rushdie, cultural theorist, declared that we are all gypsies. We are all products of hybridity, global nomadic creatures, sharing theorists Homi Baba's description of the hybrid as restless, uneasy, interstitial hybridity, a radical heterogeneity, discontinuity, the permanent revolution of forms. The hybridity endeavor has a tendency to lose connections with the Roma minority discourse and with the Roma communities and tends to remain an abstract occupation, often nothing more than the simple amusement of a small circle of privileged elite. It is often questioned whether a Roma individual in a disadvantaged rural, for example Serbia or Romania, could ever feel that this is a rhetoric she can identify with, even if she is a devoted reader of critical theory. The trend of disseminating this kind of transgression of the static identity, static Roma identity, could have two negative side effects. One, that it seems to provide the rhetoric option B for the colorblind political policies of Southern, Central and Eastern Europe, which have tragic consequences regarding the reality of Roma. We need to stay attentive to the question whose interests are served by articulating identity in terms of hybridity. And we need to examine how this term is invested with meaning and related to power. The identity concept of pluriculturalism, serving with inspiration for the Inside Outsiders initiative, understands identity as a result of experiences in different cultures. It envisions a world of rich and complex individuals with multiple and shifting identifications and not one static identity. This identity concept presumes the respect of other cultures and a desire to learn, exchange and grow in order to complete and build our identities. It is a constructive and transformative model for theory, art and life which enables us to get closer to the fulfillment of understanding, reconciliation and peace. We can cer certainly generate passionate dispute if we attempt to define which identity politics is the best practice and which we shall follow in, ca in case of the Roma. We always forget the most important lesson identity theories teach us, that minorities' identities to Roma identity is formed in relation, in interaction with the majority. Roma identity seeks to be both opened up to difference to be made ecstatic, literally be taken out of the self, sexually, socially, racially, and to be fixed in position to the other, to be established again, secured as a sovereign self. How do we achieve the potential reconciliation of interrelations between Gajo subjectivity and gypsy reality? Um, Unfortunately, I can't give you a recipe, but I can serve with a few humble suggestions. 
um, artists, theorists and researchers are looking for analytic and practical options confronting and delinking from the colonial matrix of power which produced social discrimination eventually codified as racial, ethnic, anthropological or national according to specific historic, social and geographic contexts. And this is how they arrive to the movement of decoloniality. Decolonial thinking is the recognition and implementation of the Roma border gnosis. If we acknowledge that the idea of decoloniality in the Roma context is in fact also suggest that the Roma movement is in search of a new humanity or the search for social liberation from all power organized as inequality, discrimination, exploitation and domination, then, as the Indian literary critic and theorist Gayatri Chakravarti Spivak suggests, quote, we rightly turn to the feminists who have long known how to use state mechanism so that neither nationalism nor fascism shall gain ground. Um, I write here about Roma women artists uh, whose careers demonstrate the operation of structural oppression towards the Roma, uh, and I describe their strategies uh, for self-representation visuality. Um, and I quote uh, Judith Butler who says they reject and change the laws in order to use them against those who created them. Um, so number two is feminism, and now we get to number three option, um, so the Roma art practice takes us even one step further. There is plenty of artistic practice and curatorial work that focuses on the analysis or description of the mentality of the non-Roma, or in other words, the whiteness, and its racism, nationalism, Roma hatred, the main component of the present situation. It can resituate whiteness from its unspoken, unspoken status. It can make whiteness visible by asserting its normalcy and transparency. Uh, to shed light exactly on the perpetuation of the kind of asymmetry that has marred the critical analysis of racial, ethnic formation and cultural practice, where the majority white position remained unexamined, unqualified, essential, homogeneous, seemingly self-fashioned and unmarked, by history or practice. In the beginning of uh, my presentation, I mentioned that I have a passion for working with Roma artists, and I describe the shameful conditions for Roma in my country. In relation to the growing violence and physical threats or the memory of the Roma murders, attempts for reconciliation appeared almost exclusively in the field of contemporary art. Paul Gilroy in Postcolonial Melancholia writes about the need Quote, to transform paralyzing guilt into a more productive shame that would be conducive to the building of a multicultural nationality that is no longer phobic about the prospect of exposure to either strangers or otherness. The coloniality, feminist strategies, critical whiteness, and inducing constructive shame through such practices, the largely dispersed and fragmented Roma communities could transcend national boundaries, creating a mutually accessible, translatable and inspirational political culture that invites universal participation. Thank you.